Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain the problem E, count the blocks from the educational code for this round 84, which I sell today. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the bad sound quality, and as soon as the shops will be opened again, I'm going to buy a new microphone, so that the sound quality will become better. Now, let's move on to the problem. So, we are given an integer n, and all the integers from 0 up to 10 are 10 minus 1, padding them with leading zeros. We are given how this looks like for n equal to 3, and we are also given the definition of a block. In this integer, a block is this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one, or this one. Basically, it is a consecutive segment of equal digits that cannot be extended to the left or right. For each block length i, we are asked to find the number of such blocks. Now let's move on to how a block looks like based on the big number from the sample. And now let's divide it based on the borders of each block. So this is the number. Now, we can observe the following thing. For each block, the numbers bordering the block are different to the value inside the block. Also, every block has two borders except for the block starting at position 1 and the block ending at position n, where n is the number of digits of the number. Using th these observations, now we can easily find a formula if we fix the block length i and the starting position j. Basically, let me, let me draw a number. We have a block with value x, which is of length i. The number has length n, as I said. Here we have some digits, and in the right side some digits too. It doesn't matter where they are placed. Also, we have the bordering digits, which can be x. Now, we can, all right, we can give values to the digits not in the block, just like we want at first. So, the formula will look like this, 10 at n minus i. Also, we can, all, we can fix the value from the block. There are 10 possible digits, so we are going to multiply by another 10. But, we need to consider the fact that we have these bordering digits. So, we will multiply by 9 divided by 10 if the starting position isn't 1. And we will also multiply this number by 9 divided by 10 if the ending position isn't n. Basically, the starting position shouldn't be equal to n minus i plus 1 where i is the number length. Now, let's find out how this formula looks for all the j's. So, for j equal to 1 or n, the value will be the same. Now we are going to assume n bigger or equal than 2, as well as number length bigger than 2. Because for i equal to 1, we can just print 10, because there are only 10 digits, and we can't add any more digits. Now, for j equal to 1 or n, the value will look like that, 10 at n minus i plus 1, 
multiplied by 9 divided by 10, which is basically 10 at n minus i or 9. Now, let me open a new file and for j equal to 2 up to n minus 1, we will have the same thing, 10 at n minus i plus 1, or 9 plus 10 twice. Why twice? Because we can have, we have both digits bordering the block. Now, we can, we have to find a way to compute this pretty fast. So, since all these values are equal, we can now just multiply this value with the number of numbers in this range and add up the number from the previous case. Let me write once again the formula. Okay, we, we wrote the formulas. So, for this case, 10 at n minus i minus 1 or 81, we will have n minus 2 uh, values. So, we are going to multiply this thing by n minus 2. And for this case, we, are, we have only two numbers. So, we need to multiply this thing by 2. Now, how to compute this first? since we have quite a big n. There are two ways we can do this. We can either pre-compute all the values of 10 at 10 in an array, or we can use binary power. I'm not going to explain here how the binary power works, since it's quite easy. But I'm going to explain how to compute this for every i. Basically, for every i, in range 1 to n, i being the number length. If i is 1, print n, else, there are two cases. We need to find the answer for the end of the number and for positions which are not the ends of the number. Ends 1, the one for the ends, is 10 at n minus i or 9 or 2 because we have two positions. We have to use only 9 available digits for one of the neighbors and we have 10 at n minus i. And the ends 2 is equal to 10 at n minus i minus 1 or 81 because we need to fix two digits or n minus 2. In order to compute these values, you will have to use mod for every single value because otherwise you, your answer would overflow. Now at the end, we will only have to print ns1 plus ns2 and we shouldn't forget to add the mod. Now as a fun fact, you will observe that the answers will be the same every time we run this. Basically for length equal to 1, the answer will be 10, then 180, then 2610, and so on. This can be also pre-computed, assuming we wouldn't have a source code limit, but this isn't a desirable method in competitive programming context. Now, I will show you how I got accepted using this method. 
So there we go. During the contest, I didn't observe the fact that we don't have to use the modular inverse, so I pre-computed it. Now, I did it in a reverse way, like find the answer for length n minus i plus 1, but the approach is basically the same. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye.